All right, here are our meze. This is a great way to begin a Tunisian meal, and, and really a traditional way to begin a Tunisian meal. But more than that, this is a healthy way to begin any meal. Look at the amount of vegetable matter that we have added to this meal, and it's only just begun. All right, next I'd like to make a pastry for you. This is a savory pastry, and you could easily consider it to be the national pastry of Tunisia. It's called brick, and it has inside a number of different things, but typically it starts with potato. I've got some cooked potato here that I'm just gonna rice right into the bowl. And then we're gonna flavor that potato with a number of different things. Here's some canned tuna. This is tuna that was packed in olive oil. I've got some onions that are diced fine. I'm gonna put capers in here. I've chopped them up a little bit. Parsley. And we've already been introduced to harissa. And I'm gonna flavor this with some harissa. So let's stir this all together. This is a pretty typical filling, but you'll see esoteric versions of this that have fillings that include uh, things like lamb brain and anchovies and uh, other vegetables. This simpler one I like. The other thing I'll tell you is that it's not uncommon for these fillings to contain egg. But before we put any egg in, I'd love to taste this. and make sure that I'm happy with the flavor. A little bit of lemon, a little bit of salt. There's plenty of heat from the harissa. This is our filling right here. Let me show you the pastry that we're gonna wrap this in. This is called brick pastry, and it's a very thin, thin paper or pastry. It's made by taking a dough, a very moist dough, and dabbing that dough on the back of a hot surface, on the back of a hot pan, and the dough sticks to it, and then when it's cooked, it's peeled away, as you see it right here. So this is brick pastry. You can find it in the freezers in Mediterranean groceries, maybe even in a, a grocery store that you've got. It's not uncommon on the streets to see this potato filling be put in here. They will crack an egg into the hollow of that filling and then simply fold the whole thing over like that and lower it into the hot fat to fry. The egg will spill out a little bit and seal the edge. And by the time it's golden brown on the top and the bottom, the white of the egg will have set and the yolk will still be liquid and it'll create kind of a creamy sauce. It's a little problematic because it's easy to get egg yolk right down your shirt. So what we're going to do is we're gonna actually add egg to this filling and bind it. We're gonna bind it with, with the egg so that there's no liquid egg that can run out. Good. Now, this while it's traditional on the streets, is pretty large. And so sometimes what you will see is they will take the dough, they will open it like this, and simply fold each of the rounded edges in, in this fashion. They'll put a little bit of filling in there, and then they'll fold it into a triangle about like that. That's also pretty traditional, but what I'm going to do is make what I like to imagine to be mini brick, and we're going to cut this piece of dough in half. I'm going to take a little bit of the filling and just put it right here. I'll do the same here. And what we're going to do is I'm gonna moisten the edges with water so that it sticks to itself. 
using the pastry brush that I was born with. And I'm just going to fold this over probably three or four times. And there is one mini brick ready to be fried. And here the second. Good. I have some oil here. It is hot. I'll just check the temperature quickly. Perfect. And what I would like to do is just lower these brick into the hot fat. So lay them in away from yourself. Don't splash hot oil on yourself. The nice thing about this pastry, and I'll just show you another slice here while we're waiting for these to fry, is that uh, it comes to you frozen. And unlike phyllo pastry, which can be a little temperamental, this stuff is pretty forgiving. You can wad it up like this, and it will open up again. This one uh, got folded back on itself somehow. But even then, you should be able to to peel it apart. Oftentimes, I will use this to wrap a piece of fish in or, um, you know, some sort of sweet preparation. Maybe there's some fruit that gets put in here and wrapped and fried. It's a nice pastry to have on hand. The oil that I'm frying these at was probably around 370 degrees, something like that. And that's just about right for deep fat frying. Uh, you can see these are browning beautifully. They held together nice. That liquid egg in the filling sort of spills to the edge and just seals the edges. And when you get a nice golden color, then just drain any excess oil from these, first over the pan and then on an absorbent towel. Good. The dough is so thin that you can actually see the flecks of parsley in the filling inside. It's really pretty compelling, pretty captivating to see. Well, they'll stay warm for a while, and you can certainly reheat them. I would say these are at their best, taken right from the fryer or the pan like this, and then rushed to the table. Now, like a lot of fried food, the brick benefit from a little bit of lemon squeezed over them. And if I were you, and in some sense I am you, I'm the chef, when you take the last thing from a pot of hot oil, always remember to turn the oil off. Never walk away and leave it unattended because that's a recipe for disaster. All right. These final few brick are ready to be put into place. We're building this house out of brick. I apologize for that. And... All right, so there you have it, Tunisian brick. This is delicious. It's not that difficult to do if you have the brick pastry, and I can guarantee you people love to eat this. Next, I'd like to make a tagine for you. Maybe you've heard of tagines before. You might have even ordered a tagine, and it could surprise you if one day you get a dish that is presented very much like this dish right here, and when they lift the lid, inside is a liquid stew, either with fish, vegetables, or maybe lamb. That's what you could expect if you were in Morocco. But imagine that you order a tagine in Tunisia, and you get something that comes out in a shallow, oval, oven-proof dish like this with no lid, and the contents is bound with egg and cheese. 
uh, very different. So liquid tagine in Morocco, bound tagine in Tunisia. And just to underscore the difference, I thought I would make a Tunisian tagine today. All right, to begin with, we're gonna saute some onions. And I've got a hot pan right here. And the onions get cooked. We'll give them just a second so that they can become translucent. I love the fact that they can give up that harsh, biting, um, sulfurous quality. That's driven off by the high heat of the pan before anything else is added. Now, our tagine is gonna have lamb in it, and so I have some ground lamb, and we'll cook that next. And I wanna season that lamb with a selection of exotic spices. Tunisia falls on the route that was the camel caravan that brought exotic spices from the Middle and Far East all the way across Africa and ultimately up into Northern Europe. Spices that ordinarily we relegate to holiday baking, let's say, sweet spices like cloves and ginger, like cardamom. They are so familiar in North Africa, Tunisia especially with these spices, that they make their way into savory food as well as sweet food. So here, the onions are cooked and in goes the lamb. And I'm gonna break this 